Welcome to Nerdstalker. We're doing a special interview here. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerdstalker on Twitter. Uh, yeah, like I said, special interview here with our guest, and you are Pablo Neirati. I'm the creator of uh, Census. Cool. Yeah, Census. So I don't know if you if you guys out there have uh, that are listening and watching uh, have remembered the last uh, podcast with Greg. We uh, talked about Census briefly. And uh, what what census is? Well, maybe I shouldn't even explain what it. Pablo, what is census? Can you explain that in a nutshell? <laughs> sure. Uh, census is an uh, HTML5 uh, media center, right? That uh, it, it focuses on uh, on you know cloud content, not on your local content, but you know content that is on the cloud, you know. So yeah. that, uh, and right now it's featuring all Creative Commons content, like movies and and uh, music, and, and there's actually a show now on it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I saw. So, yeah, H, uh, Census is an HTML5 media center, uh, completely built in, what, is it uh, JavaScript, CSS? Is it just all front-end sort of technologies? Uh, yeah, it's uh, JavaScript and you know, HTML5, CSS3 on the client side and PHP on the server side. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so if you guys can go, um, the URL is censusproject.com if you want to follow along at home right now. Uh, that's all, all one word, one URL here. Uh, so what we see here when you get there is, you know, sort of a high level sort of thing. It looks like you want to like, I, I want to install like an application or something like here, but there's this little button that just says launch, launch census. Right. And then, uh, and then what happens when I, when I launch that guy? All right. Whenever you, you press that and a new window shows up, then it tries to be full screen or maximize as, as much as it can. And, uh, you know, for security reasons, you can't go full screen yet on HTML5. Uh, but you know, um, it takes oh, all right. over the space, and uh, you control it with your keys because you know it's supposed to you know, replicate the experience of a, of a con remote control, right? Yeah. Uh, I actually hook up uh, you know my iPhone with my Mac and start to use it as a remote control and, wow. you know, through the browser. Oh my god! And uh, yeah, then it starts being more interesting, you know, because it's a ten foot uh, GUI. So, yeah, I didn't even think of that. So you could do that with your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever right. device independent, right? All you need is a browser. Home brew stuff. Yeah. Wow, that's insane, man. So um, the design is, I got to say, too, it's really uh, quite elegant, actually. You know, it's super simplified right now, obviously, right? You go under music and um, you see some sort of bands. Can you talk about, like, um, the content that's currently on there? Because it might be a little confusing for for uh, our listeners and viewers when they come there and they're like, well, you know, what's in there? How do I get my stuff in there? Right. Well, uh, at the very beginning, I... Uh... I just you know, added content to try and see if it worked, right? Uh, but then when I was about to launch it, I said, okay, well, let's add real content now. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. something that people want to listen to or watch. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in the case of, you know, MC Lars and, you know, Hungry Lucy or Tomas Batista or, mm -hmm. um, you know, all this you, you see in the music section, you know, yeah. I, I Nine Inch Nails. Talk to them and <laughs> Nine Inch, Nine Inch Nails. I did not ask them for their permission, but they, they had, you know, like a... Creative, Creative Commons. Commons, so yeah. I just took it. Very smart. Uh, but in the case of others, I did go and you know talk to them. They were cool with it, and they all were very nice about it. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, yeah, and just post the content. And um, same thing with uh, Pioneer One, which is the show on the shows category. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have much time to you know start building the whole library. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's one man power here. <laughs> but uh, and um. You know, the idea is not to be a YouTube. Many people ask me, when are you going to add the upload button? And yeah, I right. said, no, there's not right. going to be an upload button. The idea is to provide, uh, you know, real content, like real shows, real music, or real movies. They don't have to be like uh, with a you know, million budget, you know, kind of movie, but it has to be a movie, not a video blog, let's say. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in, in the case of, you know, um, Nerds Talker could be a show, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a show you see, you know, every week. And, you know, it's not going to die tomorrow. So, uh, you know, that, that's the idea, to be entertaining. It's focused on the user and not the, you know, content makers that, you know, sometimes they don't have a structure for the show or whatever. Wow. So, I mean, this is a, this is a pretty amazing one. When, when we first checked it out, it looked like, um, you know, an interesting use of the, of the technology and, uh, what, what browsers are really capable now of It's it's, uh, pretty amazing. And I mean, I guess in theory, you know, some, everyone out there could potentially build themselves one of these right i mean it's sort of like a front end to your you know to your 
whatever your hard drive, which could be your faux server or something like that, and you could run sort of your own media center, right, uh, via browser. Right. Actually, yeah, the main goal, I, mean, I haven't built that yet, but the main goal of the census is to have different sources where you can have you know, media from. So uh, you can pick which libraries you want to use. Yeah, in some cases, it might be even local. But, uh, you know, the idea is to be a decentralized kind of uh, – it's not iTunes or Amazon or something that, that you have to go to them if you want to buy at Amazon or an iTunes. In this case, you could just, you know, take out the, the official library, add another one. You can use that one and still use the very same client, right? So, And uh, it's very, very – well, I know, easy, but uh, – once you know HTML5, it says, and all this, uh, you know, they provide great tools, you know, HTML5. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it took me like two months to build that. Wow, two months. Wow. And, uh, and so yeah. how, and you got, how many people you got working on this? I got one, me. You, yeah, just Pablo. <laughs> Pablo Incorporated. Uh, yes, <laughs> Pablo Incorporated. Actually, the problem is I have way too many projects. Now I'm starting to focus, right? Mm. Uh, I have like a HTML5 game on one side, mm -hmm. this media center, and, uh, and of course, well, a product that I'm actually building that it is supposed, supposed to be business. You know, census is not. It's more of an open, free, do whatever you want kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Um, but, you know, they all use the very same framework, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is also custom made. You know, I, I made it with someone else, you know. And, uh, hmm. and some people might ask, you know, is it stalled or something, you know, the development? And the thing is, um, I'm, I'm working with two, two more people on a new platform where we can move sensors to. You know, it's going to be faster to build it, it on. You know, and it's not going to really take that long to, to port it. So it's actually a smart move. So um, we're going to actually see see more updates on the on the app awesome so for uh, viewers and listeners that are wondering why you're pixelating or why your your uh, your audio comes in and out sometimes um where where are you uh contacting us from anyways where are we calling you yeah um i'm from uh i'm in argentina and, and for those who didn't excel at, at geography at school uh it's uh, <laughs> one of the southest countries in, in america right yeah American continent, by the way. <laughs> yes, 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 the continent. Yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> You'll hear from our Canadian viewers that are, you know, lash out at you. <laughs> We're America too. No. So, um, <laughs> so when when I see uh, you know, library and join and um, developer and legal and contact, what kind of stuff is in there? What what do you, what are you trying to convey uh, on census on the website there? Well, from one side, uh, uh you know, the idea is to to get you know developers you know get more enthusiastic on you know keep you know helping the whole community which is you know, just me and a few people that have their content on it uh, you know, build it, the app and the server and you know, take it further and for content creators to expose their work right in a very beautiful way I mean sense is very nice to to show it especially for the web right which mm -hmm. is still quite you know uh, not that advanced as you know native apps and all that. And, um, well, legal, it was more of a don't screw with me. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to add yeah, a few yeah, paragraphs. Sure. Uh, but, um, and, but, you know, anyone who wants their content in it they can just go to the join part in the library and just submit who they are and we'll talk. Awesome. So um, you pretty much told us the go, the go forward plans there. Um, it looks like you do have some sort of business model here, right? Right. Um, it's the idea was to also. Yeah, you know, I had this thing that I I still haven't figured out yet how to do it. And the thing is, uh, developers always will work for free on mm. these kind of projects. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the business model you see over there, it's for content creators, ah, right? Okay. Because uh, you know you have Great HD idea. version, you, you could eventually pay for, it. and you know if you you're watching an HD version of you know this show, let's say more points go to that show and the that show gets more revenue, but uh, I still haven't figured out a fair way to pay developers and you know people who are actually you know making this possible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard for yeah. the developer community. Yeah. And, uh, so we'll see about that. Yeah, I was about to ask because I'm sure there's lots of developers who want to participate or, or submit code or something to see if you're going to do a Git repository or something like that, you know? Well, it's already uh, at GitHub. 
Yeah, so oh, it, it is. Um, okay. Some people have already. Yeah. Oh, great. So um, we'll add the URL to that uh, when when we get it from Pablo. How about that? Awesome, man. So, uh, any other go forward plans that you have for senses? Uh, well, uh, first step is moving to a new platform, right? Oh, that, yeah. that, that's going to be huge. It's going to be, it's a great platform. I'm, I'm very <laughs> proud of it. And, uh, and the next steps will be adding, you know, support for local configuration of the app, mm. uh, localization for language, you know, and the ability to see subtitles, you know, and um, in case the media is not in your native language, you know, had add subtitles automatically, and yeah. um, and of course, eventually add the add your own source feature, right? Which is which is the, the biggest main thing of Sense, right? Be be like a sort of Linux of uh, you know openness in media centers. Yeah, yeah. What were the challenges with this, you know, building this version that we see right now, this live version right now? And you talk about, you know, a new platform and why, why go in there? So first, can you talk about the challenges of, of building what you released? Uh, yes. Let's see. Well, uh, I had this idea for like almost two years before I actually started building it. You know, this stuff that come out when you're in the show or something and uh, you know, so whenever I sit down and build it, I had a real, really clear idea of what I wanted, right? right? For design, I'm actually a designer, but I like I like to program too. So, uh, and um. Oh, that's interesting. So your so your background is with design primarily, huh? Oh, I'm an interfaces designer for for apps, or web apps, or whatever. But wow. I'm an interfaces designer, wow. and I like to program. Yeah, I'm very nerdy as well, yeah. so. You might stalk me since you are a nerd stalker. And yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So that's great. So, the, so that means you, so you came from the design front, from that side into sort of the programming side. So that's interesting because a lot of times it's the other way out too, right? Programmers trying to do design work or something like that. I was wondering yeah, why this looks so it, great. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, that that's actually one of the things uh, we're uh, we're attacking with a with a platform we're building. You know, mm-hmm. uh, sh- sh- briefly, um, it it separates design from code in the way you have to worry about the GUI or user experience or anything, you know? ah, uh-huh. because yeah, you know, technically you don't need different interfaces for each app, right? Because right. people get used to an interface, right? So right. look at the iPhone, you know, every app has sort of the same kind of navigation. So yeah. uh, it abstracts all that so the programmer can just focus on programming. Right. Uh, because I see apps that are made from developers to developers and uh, like GIMP, the photo yeah. editing app, and I can use it as a designer, you know. It has all the features as, yeah. as Photoshop, but I can't use it. The workflow is not made for me. Yeah, believe me, so, I tried um, lots of times too, and the same thing here. It's like, yeah, it's it's, it's just very, that it's so, too many times of having to find out where where did that crop crop selection go again? Where's that? And ah, oh, heck, I'll just open, really? I'll fire up Photoshop again because I just know it, right? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, Photoshop now it's you know they, you haven't been progressing that much in a few years, but uh, a project is more about just programmers, you need, you need designers and interface designers and people that you know, translate it. And there's a whole world, not just programming. And yeah. uh, so that's important to keep in mind when you start a project. Some, uh, I got some comments like, uh, when are you going to add uh, pointing support you know, for the mouse? Mm. I said, I'm never going to add support <laughs> for the mouse <laughs> because the whole idea is to you know, sit back and use a remote or you know, yeah. keyboard, let's say. But... Uh, the mouse is an you know, active thing. You have to be moving around all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, remote or uh, you know, keyboard is more passive thing. So uh, it's you know, it's pretty neat when you're just tired and you just want to sit back and just move, pressing like this, uh, mm-hmm. you know, many times and just find what you want. And for the user interface, yeah, I didn't I didn't go too revolutionary in there, you because know, I had the idea here. I just wanted to you know, put it in there. So, um, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty much what you see, you know, you go from the category to, you know, the group, let's say, or in general, and then start filtering down to the content you want to hear. Right, right. But then you're going to hear like old, I bet it was some old guy like, like me who probably contacted you about uh, using the cursor or pointing or whatever, right? Uh, where, when uh, you had the perfect idea that, uh, it should be done with your cell phone. It should be done with your iPad. It should be touch centric or, or something like that. Or, or if you're at your, you know, your, your desktop keyboard centric, you know, or whatever, you shouldn't have to worry about some sort of, I don't know, something like yeah, that. I mean, I- 
like again, it's a 10 foot interface, so it's supposed not to be used for mm. by the mouse, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not meant for it, but uh, I I love to eventually add support to running on your on your iPad, right? Mm. Not on your iPhone. iPhone maybe it's too small. Maybe a different interface will do better on it. True. But uh, the iPad will look very nice with it. You know, just sweeping to go through each album or whatever. That that'll be nice to see, and you don't have to change much of it. That's the magic of HTML5. I mean, if it runs on a browser, it runs everywhere pretty much nowadays. You know, if you have a WebKit browser, uh, it works, right? Yeah. And uh, oh, one of the things uh, here, you 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 ask for this. Um, one of the problems I faced was Google Chrome. Oh wow! If you see, if you see on the on the on the side, I say I recommend Safari. I think this is not an issue anymore. But the thing is, I, there there were some effects I couldn't do on Chrome. Uh, those were uh, 3D, uh, and uh, I think reflection wasn't working as well. And uh, the problem with 3D, 3D is that it was disrupting the whole design. You know, reflection, you just didn't see it, but uh, you, know, you couldn't even use it before. So um, I had to change many things to make it work on Chrome, and uh, some effects still didn't show up. So, so I you know, described, please use Apple Safari for better experience, because ah. I don't know why. But okay. yeah, even if they both use WebKit, uh, Safari supports more efforts or whatever. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. there's always you know you never know. You know, everyone thinks that WebKit is the you know the panacea for for front end developers, but then you realize that you know there's lots of different versions of WebKit out there too. You know, and the yes. and Chrome is constantly revving, uh, so you just don't know. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So, um, Argentina, what is the design development uh, scene like down there, man? Um, it's hard to find developers or designers here, you know. Uh, hmm. but, but uh, among other Latin American countries, uh, I think we're the strongest in creativity and uh, um, and of development. But we we have really creative people, hmm. you know. Uh, uh, even internationally speaking, not just Latin America. Uh, yeah, we see a lot of stuff. You know, Microsoft, Google, and you know, we don't see anything from Apple. Uh, but <laughs> uh, we have a lot of official events from these companies about their browser, about their operating system. We we do have a lot of those. You know, usually Microsoft giving away you know .NET licenses because mm -hmm. no one wants to buy them and <laughs> use it. But <laughs> it's just trying to. And um, we see a whole bunch of actually some are in English, you know. Uh, they come here, but they're in English. And, uh, and so if you know English, you can go. If you don't, well, don't. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and others you know, are, are, are in Spanish, you know, done by people from here. So um, you know, you were talking about some of your other projects and stuff like that. Um, where do we get more information on on some of the other stuff that you're working on? Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> Well, the newest things like the platform, uh, well, it's not even published, right? Because we're finding it, uh, but it's beautiful. It's like the most object-oriented approach ever on a in PHP, at least. Well, I have my website, which is uh, <laughs> artpulse.me. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, I, I haven't been updating it because I'm waiting to have this new platform to build it, it on. Yeah, I get enthusiastic about something and drop everything. <laughs> so <laughs> you're you're like uh, you're the prototypical designer then, with the AD and D working on too yeah. many too many things <laughs> at one time, right? Well, I definitely need to retake uh, art polls. Um, but uh, yeah, in there I have links to my other projects. You know, uh, well, the the game we, we are developing with uh, with other, uh, someone else. Um, I have a small team for Boglets, the game, and uh, for this uh, platform, uh, there's an, uh, someone else also working on it with me, and probably someone else joining very soon. So, um, yeah, I'm on many things. That's my problem, I guess. <laughs> I can't concentrate. Because I, you know, some satisfy my my gaming needs, but yeah. other projects satisfy my my multimedia needs, and then some yeah. other my nerdy needs. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's that well rounded. That's well. That means you're a well rounded guy. So, <laughs> cool, man. Oh, well. So, how do we contact you uh, on Twitter, email, website? I think the best way is Twitter, definitely. Okay, uh, my Twitter, Twitter is Pablo Neidotti. My very same name. All right, so it should Pablo be right Neidotti above your head, right there, right? Is that you up there? <laughs> Yeah, just you know, without the space, and that, that's my Twitter account. Awesome, man. All right. Well, thanks uh, Thanks so much for being on Nerd Soccer, man. Appreciate it. I uh, love being here. Very nice. Thanks. <laughs>